break his jaw on sight. He'd have no teeth left. I'd knock him straight down his throat. I'd run after him and I'd give him the worst beat he's ever had in his life. You know, I think in Wilder's mind, you know, he's, he's mentally gone. Because after a defeat like that, it wasn't, you know, a points defeat or he got knocked down, but then he got back up. He got battered for seven rounds. Right, welcome to The Lowdown, brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarni, and joining me today is a man with fighting blood running through his veins. His brother is the world heavyweight champion. His father is probably the scariest man aged over 50 in the world. And he himself will tell you that one day he will become world champion. Tommy Fury, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm very well. Uh, that was honestly one of the best introductions that I've ever <laughs> probably had um, since doing interviews. But yeah, everything's well. Um, I'm alive, healthy and well. Um, so I can't complain, you know. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, mate. And thank you for the uh, the wonderful praise on my, my intro. It, it, I think, I mean, do you find John scary? Like, obviously, he's your dad, yes. isn't he? But... Of course, yes. I mean, um, not in a way, you know, an intimidating way, but yeah. just as an aura, don't you? I mean, you don't, you don't mess with Big John. No. Definitely not. No, why would Just don't you? do it. Definitely not. Um, so you're in Miami now. So yeah. this is this is kind of second time lucky. You tried to go over to the States before and you had to go home. And now this time you've made it. Talk me through that. Yeah, I mean, the first time didn't go so well. So uh, it was kind of a short notice thing, you know, Tyson was out of here and, uh, you know, there's an opportunity for me to go. And obviously out here is great experience, great learning, you know, different type of training, different way of life out here. Um, so, yeah, obviously I wanted to go. So, put me flights, everything like that. Everything was sorted, so, so I thought. But, yeah, I went to Heathrow, um, got to the front desk and everything like that. And it, apparently it wasn't sorted on the American side, um, but everything was on the English side. So, I thought, hey, oh, fucking, there's no good crying over spilled milk. So, um, let's get, get, get on with it. So, I went back to my own gym, trained there for a good, you know, two weeks or so. And then um, Tyson gave me a call and said, listen, I've sorted this all out for you. I know it's uh, a little bit of late notice, um, but listen, if you want to come over, the offer's there. So I took it in both hands, you know, no matter about how long I was going to be over it for, I just took it. I thought, yeah, I'll go, no problem. So um, two, three days later, flew out and yeah, it's been um, it's been amazing out here. It's been a completely different way of life, completely different training, you know, learning everything. Um, you know, it's, it's priceless. You know, you can't buy this sort of experience at this stage of my career. You look like you're also living your best life out there. So obviously there's there's the training, right? And I'm seeing that. I'm seeing you're around Sugar Hill and you're working hard. You're sweating up. You're going for your runs. But there's the tanning as well. I've seen you. You look brown. Yeah. You look probably probably on on a par with myself. And and, and I know you're not Indian. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I've actually uh, got Mauritian in me, Dev. So um, really? yes, I have. Yes. Ah, well, there you go. So, so that, uh, that explains. So has Tyson got any Mauritian in him? No, just me. Just me. That's where I get the um, the tanned up arms from them. Where you wow. can see the ring. There you go. Well, my arms are tanned, but they don't look like that, Tommy. So I don't. I, maybe I need Mauritian <laughs> in me. <laughs> um, but okay, but tell me. So you you've been. You know, you've been. Uh, I saw the picture of you and Tyson in the sea. Great. You know, it was it was a, quite an iconic photo actually. But you've been doing a bit of yeah. WWE as well, getting around that. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, out here it's been. We train as hard as anybody. You know, when we're in the gym, we're, we're training hard. Like, we're doing 30 rounds sparring. We're in the gym three hours at a time, four hours at a time. You know, we, do, we don't really keep tabs on time when we're in the gym. You know, that's how hard we're working. We don't have time to think about the time. You know, you just get in, get your gloves on and work. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of it. So, you know, yeah, we've been working extra hard. But also, you know, when, when we've got downtime and these things on, you know, we'll go and do it. We'll go and have a look at it because, you know, why not? Life for living. Um I'm young and I've still got to enjoy my life at the end of the day. And I'm dedicating my whole life to the sport of boxing. Um, I've left my family and friends at home. You know, that, that, that was a big thing for me because I'd never done that before. Um, you know, so you've got to sacrifice everything. You know, there is no, oh, I'm going to stay at home and stick to my routine. You know, you've got to get yourself out of your comfort zone and do something you've never done before. And that's why I'm doing over here. And to be fair, all these experiences tying together, you know, going... Places like WWE, doing this, doing that, you know, it's it's really living your best life. You know, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm out here doing my craft, doing what I love. But I'm also having a great time doing it. Well, you also met uh, Vin Vince McMahon, um, yeah. Ric Flair, I saw from the photos. Yeah. I mean, they must have been looking at you thinking, let's sign him up. 
Well, I mean, hopefully that's what he's thinking because after boxing, I'm definitely going to give it a go. No, uh, wrestling has always been the number one sport of mine. I've always loved it, as, as every kid does, you know, as a kid. Um, so walked in there, we were backstage, we seen them all, you know, off camera, on camera, we were right next to the ring. So literally, that experience for me was probably up there in my top top three experiences because, you know, I've always wanted to do that. And now I've done that. It's just amazing. It's like sitting here now thinking I've struck hands with Vince McMahon mm -hmm. and all these other wrestlers watching them as a kid. You know, it's just a crazy feeling. And, you know, 22 or not, you'll never get over that. <laughs> well, you sort of joked about it there about, oh, you know, that's that's what you want to do. But, I mean, would you consider it, say, 10 years' time, you've yeah. won your world title, you, you'd want to become yeah. a wrestler? Oh, yeah, million percent, million, 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 trillion percent. You know, that's uh, that wrestling game, is it's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. You know, these the, the, the big men, you can get injured in there, you know, it's no, it's no game. Uh, and I'm super athletic, and it's right up my alley because, you know, I, I like to keep in shape, I'm athletic. And, yeah, I mean, not looking too far ahead, but I would definitely give the WWE a run for its money, 100%. Nickname? What, what sort of nickname are we looking at? Uh, I don't know, really. I mean, might as well keep it, um, you know, original, maybe TNT. Um, I don't know. I'll leave that in the hands of Vince because he's uh, <laughs> he's the one that comes up with all the uh, storylines and everything, isn't he? So I'm sure he can come up with a good one for me. He is quite good at that. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you can trust Vince. So, um, yeah, that's one for the future. Then there's your scoop today. You could possibly follow in your brother's footsteps, not only in boxing, but in wrestling. Yeah, I mean, it'd be ideal, it'd be ideal. <laughs> um, tell me, so you're also out there and you were uh, ringside for Billy Joe Saunders against Canelo. Tell me the experience of the fight, how you reflect on that fight. Yeah, I mean, the experience being there, you know, in itself, you know, seeing Canelo and Billy Joe and other top fighters on the card fight, it's just motivation in itself, you know, seeing the best guys in the world go at it. You know, ringside as well. So, you know, up, up close and personal, you know, you know, how they're breathing, you know, how they are in between rounds. Some of the things that you don't really see on TV, what you can experience there. So, again, just a massive truckload of experience for me. Um, it was great, you know. The fight the fight was a great fight, you know. Canelo Alvarez is just one of them guys, you know. He's one of them guys that are just very difficult to beat. He's so strong. He's, he's quick. He's intelligent in the ring. Billy Joe was doing a, a marvellous job in the ring. Um, the jab was coming off like a, like a piston in the first couple of rounds. For me, all he needed to do was a bit more. I don't think he was doing enough in the rounds, but at the end of the day, you know, you got to look at his inactivity. He's been out the ring a very long time. His last fight was with Martin Murray, in, I think it was like a year ago or something, a year and a half ago. And you look yeah. at Canelo's resume. Canelo's fought Liam Smith, Yildrim, he's fought... I can't off the top of my head now. I don't yeah. know who's for, but he's been active, very active. Um, and that's the key in this business, activity. Um, but listen, Billy showed the heart of a lion um, and he's going to come back stronger. What did you think of the way the fight ended? That's been a real topic of debate. What are your thoughts on it all? Yeah, my, my topics are the same as, you know, when Daniel Dubois fought and all these other people, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and, and say, because I'm not in that position. You know, I'm not, I'm not in that position. I'm not in that fight. Um, I, you know, you can only answer those things when you've been in that position yourself. Uh, for me, anyway. So I'm not going to sit here, you know, after five professional fights, fighting four rounds, and say, what would I do in that scenario with my broken eye socket and all sort of stuff. I mean, I'd like to know what I think I would do. Um, but when you're in that, when you're in that scenario, it's a different story. So, you know, I respect any man to get in the ring, um, and you know, health. It's before wealth at the end of the day. So I think uh, Billy Joe 100% did the right thing um, and he lived to fight another day. Yeah, exactly. Health, health is wealth, you know, and I, I've, I've always said that as well. And you can see a lot of fighters, you know, they've, they've you know, Daniel Dubois, you know, and, and yeah. you'll be sharing a bill with him. Just on, on Dubois, so you're, you're back on June 5th um, yep. and that's a show headlined by Daniel Dubois against Bogdan Dinu. How do you think he's going to get on? He's coming back now from a, a similar injury that Billy Joe Saunders just sustained. Yeah, I think he'll come back, you know, like the bill says, even stronger. Uh, because at the end of the day, there's no... For, for Daniel, this is all experience for him. You know, look, all these great heavyweight fighters, you know, are up there now and, you know, have been and gone. Just look at how much experience that they've had along the way. You know, they've had all this... They've come over all this sort of stuff, injuries and coming back after defeats and stuff like that. You know... It happens. It's just ball boxing. Two men are in the ring and they're fighting. And, you know, we've trained for 
12 weeks, 10 weeks, however long it is for this fight, you know, it's going to happen. You can't get in the shower and not get wet. So, you know, I think he's going to come back. He's going to come back stronger. Uh, probably another quick fire knockout. Uh, and then he'll be back in the mix with some great fights. You know, I think he just needs to keep building, keep building, keep building. Yeah, absolutely. I, I see this as a bit of a thing going forward, you and him on the same show. You know, you've, you've done it before. It's the old TNT plus dynamite, huh? Yeah, definitely. No, it's always an honor to be in a, on, on good undercards, you know, like this one and, and with the cracking main event. So, yeah, I'm very privileged to be on my card. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking to, you know, show my skills on that night and um, show what I've been learning out of. Yeah, we look forward to that. So tell me, you're in Miami right now, OK? Um, Jake Paul, e- either he's in Miami or he has been in Miami for the, uh, you know, the press conference with Logan Paul and that. How have your paths not crossed? Tell you why I've not crossed because the man's um, shit scared, shall we say? That's why I did not cross. And if you're uh, very intimidated by somebody, you're not going to cross their paths. You're going to stay well a hundred miles plus away from the mountain. So uh, he's probably got my location, what I do on a daily basis, and he's just gone like that on a piece of paper: cross, 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 cross. Can't go there. It's a um, it's out of bounds area that for the next two weeks. That's what he's gone and said. But listen. I've said enough on that man there, you know, a bit. You can't say any more. The man's just a shit house, and you can't, you literally can't say any more. I mean, I don't know. It's not like I'm coming across as, um, you know, a four times Olympic gold medalist, a 20 and 0 professional, you know, it's not that, and we all know it. But at the end of the day, all I am is a man who's game to fight with a pair of balls, and he obviously isn't. So that's where we're at. Absolutely. So let's, let's, let's Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. Get the paperwork for this bug. Get, get Al Hammond. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I don't need Al Hammond. Let me call Al Hammond. I'm my let's own boss. I'm my own boss. Got your hat. Oh, got your hat. Oh, no, no. Got your hat. Hey, chill. Got your hat. Chill, chill, chill. Chill, chill. Chill, chill. Chill, chill. Chill, chill. Well, I've got to ask you, because around the whole uh, the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather press conference, <laughs> there was... There was a big uh, he's kind of brawl, really. And Jake Paul mm. nicked Floyd Mayweather's cap. So yeah. you're wearing a cap right now. You've got Jake Paul right there in your face. He takes that off. He says, got your cap, and he runs away yeah. with it. What would happen? Break his jaw on sight. He'd have no teeth left. I'd knock him straight down his throat. I'd run after him, and I'd give him the worst beat he's ever had in his life and see what a YouTuber thinks then. If he even thought about looking at my cap, I break his jaw and nose on side because he's just one of them people. You know, you can't be playing games with that man. See, but he play mind games all day with you and you play taking your hat and running off with him. You've just got to put out it is, um, you know, and that's what it is. You know, but obviously, Floyd being Floyd, he can't go and give any sense to a YouTuber now. Danny Floyd's a good businessman, is you know, one of the best fighters ever to do it. So, you know, it, it is what it is. He can't be giving his full mindset to someone like Jake Paul, you know, a kid, a YouTuber. He can't, he can't be doing that. Just, do you feel as though, I mean, with that, that, with that whole thing, there was an element of show about it. Obviously, they were. Yeah. It felt like obviously there was. It was a bit of a, a brawl, but they were putting on a show. They were conscious that cameras were there. They were probably yeah. playing it up. But are you saying that if something like that happened to you in the situation you were in, you wouldn't be able to help yourself? Oh no, definitely not. Wouldn't be able to help myself if somebody wanted to. Let's say I was in Mayweather's position. If someone wanted to come to my event and take the piss out of me like that, oh huh, no. Cameras or no cameras, you'd be getting it for sure, definitely. What well, one thing, another thing, I just want to ask you on that. So you, um, you, you've criticised the opponents that he's been in with Ben Askren. I think you said that your your mother would would soundly defeat Ben Askren. Um, easy, yeah, easy work. So he's, yeah, and he's obviously had a go at your opponents as well. But here, here's yeah. one for you: how do you how do you think your opponents that you've been in with would get on against Jake Paul? Honestly, me being serious, Scott Williams would have Jake Paul out of there in about two rounds because they're actual fighting men for a start. They've been fighting all their lives and they know what it's like to take a crack. And, you know, that, that's just it. Jake Paul doesn't. Jake Paul's not been fighting all his life. He's only been getting tapped in the gym because I know a lot of people that have sparred him and said that they was playing with him and he didn't like it. So, you know, these journeymen that I'm fighting, you know, they are there and they've been fighting all their lives and they can fight. And like you see every time with me, whenever I fight someone who's not that good, oh, he's fighting rubbish again, oh, he's fighting them and again. There is no such thing as a journeyman when, when I'm in the ring because everybody who comes to fight me, they're going to up their game tenfold because there's a lot to there's a lot to win. 
Um, so everybody's going to come and try try and fight me. Like the average journeyman is going to come and roll up and get his money and leave. The average journeyman against me is going to come up, put his best foot forward and try and win. Um, so that's why I don't really buy into what the public are saying at the minute. And obviously, you know, you've got the proper boxing people who know what they're on about. And then you've just got 95% of the audience who just don't, you know, always oh, fighting another tomato cans, he's doing this, doing that. You know, I've not had an extensive amateur background. I've had 10 amateur, 10 amateur fights as a junior and then five pro fights now. So the main goal for me is just to take it easy, step by step, step by step, and learn the craft properly because I'm not in no rush. I've just turned 22 years of age. I'm not in no rush for no titles. I can wait. I'd sooner perfect my craft to the T, get everything right, and then step up and win titles. I don't want to step up for the, you know, for the crowd and say, oh, he's, fight, he's in a good fight tonight. Yeah, but he lost. I want to be like, yeah, I'm in a good fight tonight and I've won. I'm the new British champion or whatever title that is. You know, that's that's the way I want to do my career. So uh, that's the way we're doing it. I, mean, I don't really pay too much attention on what people's got to say about my opponents. Tommy, tell me, you're with Tyson every day right now. Tyson Fury, obviously your brother, world heavyweight champion. What is your understanding of what's going on? It looked for so long like we were on the cusp of actually having his fight against Anthony Joshua. Now it looks like that seems to be further away than before. What's your understanding and what's Tyson's mood? Um, Tyson's mood is in the best mood that I've ever seen. You know, he's over here in Miami. He's, he's having fun. He's training. He's on absolute fire in the gym. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you if you was Tyson and you let all this stuff get into your head about, oh, you're not fighting this guy, you're fighting this guy. You're not fighting on this date, you're fighting on that date. You're not fighting there, you're fighting here. If you let all that go to your mind, your head's going to be fried. So all Tyson's doing at the minute is just kicking back, relaxing, training hard, keeping in shape. And just letting everything sort itself out. And I think that's the best thing that you can do. You know, you can't let those things rule your mind because if you did, you, you will not have time to train. You'd be, your mind would be constantly, you know, down. And you, you just can't do that. So I think what he's doing now is the best thing that he can do. Just, you know, take all the stress wheels off and just do what he should be doing. Training, enjoying himself. And then when everything gets sorted out, it gets sorted out. I remember speaking to you months and months ago um, and we talked about Deontay Wilder. And how he took, you know, a bit of a beating in that second fight. And we thought perhaps he won't come back. You know, he's made plenty of money. Uh, maybe the hunger's gone. The, you know, the O is certainly gone. But it looks like he does want to come back. And it's sounding like he, he wants to have the fight. Does that surprise you? Um, not really, no, because in the day, for the type of money these men are getting, you know, who, who isn't going to fight? You know, I think in Wilder's mind, you know, he's, he's mentally gone. Because after a defeat like that, it wasn't, you know, a points defeat or he got knocked down, but then he got back up. He got battered for seven rounds. And I think once that happens to you, it's, uh, you know, it's demoralising, especially for a guy who's been knocking everybody out. You know, everybody in America overseas, he's been knocking everybody out. And when that happens to you, then you sort of question yourself and be like, oh, maybe I'm not invincible. And then I think that's what's come to Wilder. And I think he's trying to do... You know, all these new things on the pads. You know, Malik Scott's in there now showing them all this sort of stuff. But I don't think he can teach an old dog new tricks, if, in my opinion. So he can do whatever he's going to do. I think in his mind, in his, you know, deep, deep down, he just thinks, you know what? I'm going to have one loss to Rah. I'm going to get some, I'm going to get a good payday out of it. And that's it. Uh, I think that's what's going on, you know, his head because he can't beat Tyson. And Tyson was literally with Sugar for six weeks for that second fight. They've been together for a lot longer now. So can you imagine what what kind of form Tyson's on? You know, it's ridiculous in the gym. It's like watching an artist paint the picture of a Mona Lisa from putting it into words. You know, it's amazing. You know, he's, he's doing everything right. He's doing everything the right way now. And it's, uh, yeah, he's 10 times better than he was that night. Well, 100 that's, times that's, better. Well, that's that's bad news. Whether it's Wilder or Joshua, that that is oh. bad news for them. <laughs> Yeah, very, very bad news. Listen, there's no one beating Tyson but Tyson, that is it. You know, these heavyweights out there, yeah, they're good, they're decent, but you've, you've got the same thing that you had with Mayweather. You know, you've got all these, the Mayweathers around, you had Canelo, you had Guerrero, you had all these mm. world champions, you know, world-class fighters, but then you've got the elite, and that's the same what we're looking at. Hey, you know, you've got these world-class fighters, you your Joshua's, your Wilders, you all this sort of stuff, but then you've got your elite. You know, you've got Tyson because Tyson can do everything. He's not just got one style and, oh, if Tyson fights like it. Tyson fights any style and we've all seen it over the years. So 
you know, I just don't see anybody beating him. I don't see anybody lacing his gloves up now for what I'm seeing over here in the gym. I just don't. Who is the more dangerous fight for him next then? Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder? It really doesn't matter. Like, you know, it really doesn't matter because, you know, it is what it is. Um, Tyson knows exactly what to do with both of them. So, whoever, Tyson's not bothered. You know, whoever gets in that ring next, he's, he's more than ready for them. And if it, if it does end up being uh, Deontay Wilder, I know we've, we've talked before about how Deontay Wilder has a younger boxing brother called Marcellus, and we've mentioned before, mm-hmm. oh, that would be a nice little fight for the undercard. The, I mean, the, uh, the fight itself, Wilder Fury 3, seemed miles and miles away at the time that we discussed it. But does that, it, does that enter your thoughts now, now that that fight might actually be happening and maybe, uh, maybe a bit of Tommy Fury on the undercard? How about Fury v Wilder on the undercard? I mean, listen, I'm, I'm game for whatever. I mean, that would make headlines. It would be, uh, be a good thing, you know, and it would be a, you know, a privilege to fight with Tyson on the same undercard, you know, both getting victories. Fury, well, one, one set of Fury is 1-0, and then the other set, 3-0. So, um, yeah, no, it would be good at the end of the day. I'm game for anything. I'm up for anything. I'm over here. I'm training. I'm in shape. Um, so, yeah, wh- whatever comes, I'll be ready for. And um, if it, you know, if it's a good fight for the fans, it's a good fight. But I'll definitely have a piece of him. Like I said before, I called him out. I think when was it? Dev? Me and you called him out last November, press November. Yeah, I think it was like November. Yeah. yeah, he didn't reply, did he? No, 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 no. But what can we do? What can we do? So June fifth, you're back, and uh, yeah, I've seen you with Sugar Hill, um, and, and I've seen you get better and better with each fight as well. Do you feel as though you've you've learned a ton more between November and and June fifth? Yeah, definitely. You know, I've learned a lot, a hell of a lot. Um, you know, I'm like a sponge in this game. You know, wherever I am um, in the boxing gym, you know, the fitness gym, whatever somebody's teaching me, I just take it in. And I've always been that way as a kid. For me now, it's about taking the knowledge in here that I've grasped and putting it into play in the ring. You know, that, that's that's where I'm at in my stage of career now. As you can see, I'm getting better with every fight. You know, I'm taking my time more, I'm picking more of my shots, and it is coming together. And it will come together, all of it. You know, it just takes time. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, and boxing is the hardest game out there. And if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. You know, everyone would be a world champion. Everybody would walk around saying, I'm a fighter and this and that. Mm. But, you know, it's hard. It's the hardest job in the world. Um, you know, and I'm trying. That's all, that's, that's all I'm doing. You know, I'm trying to be better. Um, I'm trying to put on a better show of myself for everybody. And June 5th, you're going to see that again. Well, June 5th, fans will be back. There'll be a 1,000 fans in yeah. in the arena, uh, how will that affect you? That will honestly raise my game tenfold. Um, I know it's only a thousand fans, but it's better than boxing empty. Oh, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, having the crowd there, it's just going to be amazing. I can't. That, that's honestly the main thing that's picked me up for this fight because obviously, you know, oh, you're fighting on June fifth. Yeah, it's behind closed doors. Yeah, there's no one there. Okay. Yeah, you're fighting June fifth, but there's a thousand people there. Oh, it's like the world. It's like you fight in front of 100,000 because after boxing in front of no one and hearing nothing and then you box in front of 1,000 people that can make noise, you know, it's everything to you and that's really what I'm looking forward to on the night. It's going to be amazing. But would you not argue, Tommy, just to play devil's advocate, that your best performances might have actually come without fans there? Maybe when the fans are there, you get all hyped up and excited and you're running trying to knock the fella out. The last couple, you've yeah. been quite measured. You know, there's been no one screaming your name. How, so do, do, what are we going to see? Well, you're going to see a hundred times better version of me because when I'm in that ring, I don't hear the crowd anyway. So when I'm in the ring, I'm going to take my time and do what I know I should be doing. Uh, but on the way to the ring, you're going to see me smiling. You're going to see me waving. It's going to be it's going to be good, you know. It's uh, it's always good to have fans there. I know a lot of people, you know, have heard over these you know past few months about people boxing behind closed doors that they do better with no crowd. You know, there's not much pressure on. They don't freeze. But with me, I'm definitely a type of fighter who likes the crowd there. I feed off the energy of the crowd because for my last fight, when I was in the changing room, there was nothing. I felt literally ten seconds before going out the way I feel now. You know, I'm just sat here, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to go training a bit. But, you know, when there's a crowd there, you just, you just cannot beat it. Like, I am, I'm there, I'm, the full part of me is there. The hype's up me, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to put on a show. So you can't, you can't beat it. 
No, we're, we're looking forward to it. But look, before I let you go, Tommy, I, I just want to get your thoughts on the light heavyweight division in general. Obviously, you're a lot younger, a lot earlier in your career. You're, you're 22, and the guys at the top, certainly domestically, who are knocking on the door for world titles are in their late 20s, sometimes their mid-30s, if you look at Callum Johnson. Um, who do you consider to be the best of the bunch in the UK right now? Um, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, it really is. I mean... You know, my top four off my head will, will be sort of like, you know, no destroy. You've got your Boatsy, you've got your uh, Lyndon Arthur, um, Anthony Yard, Jose Burton. I know, I know I don't hear his name a lot, but you cannot forget him. You know, he's boxed a high level. Um, he had them two amazing fights with Frank Bullione. You know, he's got a lot of experience. And I think he beats a lot of them men. Um, but, you know, the light heavyweight scene in Great Britain is, is amazing. You know, there's so many great fights to be had there. There's so many great fighters out there. And I just look on and see all them great fights getting made. And, you know, one day I'll be in that mix. I know, but, uh, but at the end of the day, it's like anything. It's like time. You've got to give it time. Um, and you can't rush. You've got to build up to that. And that's what I'm in now. You know, I wish all them fighters best of luck in the careers. And may the right fights get made. Um, and, yeah, and so be. But for the time being, deep being, I'm just looking ahead, learning, watching, and, and waiting for my time. All right, well, look, we are enjoying the journey. We're looking forward to seeing fight number six on June the 5th. Um, anything final you want to add, Tommy, before I let you go? It's going to be a great night. And everyone who's going to buy tickets, um, you're going to get your money's worth. It's going to be an amazing show. You've got a lot of amazing fighters on there. Just want to shout out BT Sport and Frank Warren for getting me on. Um, and, yeah, I'll see you all June 6th. Be there, I'll be square. We will see you then, Tommy. Thank you very much for speaking to me on the lowdown today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Cheers, mate.